good morning, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Brett Gray. I'm the Principal Solutions and Services Engineer for Puppet and APAC. I've been with Puppet for about three and a half years, and during that time, I've done a hell of a lot of consulting with different companies all over APAC. So, Puppet every year for the last five years does a DevOps report. We send out a survey to lots of different people and get about between 4,000 and 6,000 people replying to us on that survey. And we're trying to figure out where DevOps is heading, what's, what problems people have, and what they're actually doing in the field. So the overall strategy of DevOps is to align yourself with what your company's trying to do, not just thinking about your own individual team, but looking at the mission, what goals the company has, and trying to adjust, address them as a whole company. So what DevOps is to us is, it's a combination of culture, automation, measurement, and sharing. And the hardest one we've found that people try to change is their culture. If you don't change your culture in your company, you cannot do DevOps. So who here thinks that the culture in their companies currently is ideal for doing DevOps? Anyone? A few people? Who thinks their culture is not very good for doing DevOps in their company? A fair few people. And you'll find with a lot of companies that are very hierarchical, like old banks, government, stuff like that, they find it very difficult to let people that are actually doing the work have some power to actually do what they need to. So that's one of the hardest things to address. And with you using automation, who here is using any sort of automation, something like Puppet, Chef, Ansible? So most people here are, so that's really good to see. So this was just making you deliver things faster. If you can't deliver things faster, I bet your, cus uh, your competitors are. And they're releasing software quicker than you, that means they're learning quicker than you, that means they're fixing things quicker than you. There's no point in someone coming up with an idea in your company for a new campaign, doing a new application or something, and it takes you nine months to deliver that thing. Your, com your competitors have already probably done that and overtaken you by that stage. And when you start doing DevOps, you need to measure things. You need to have some sort of metrics. Who here is measuring how long it takes to de deploy software, how many failures they have? Yeah. If you're not doing that sort of thing, how do you know you're actually improving or you're getting worse? You need to actually figure out if you're doing the right thing or not. And sharing, sharing information around your company. Who here is a sysadmin? Anyone? A few people? Okay, so I've gone into companies before working with Puppet and the sysadmin says to me, how do I stop that developer changing anything? Who's heard that before? <laughs> yeah, and who here is a dev? And who wants to deliver stuff faster but those grumpy old sysadmins won't let them do it? Yeah, I'm a grumpy old sysadmin by the way. So, <laughs> I can understand that. Now, the problem with that is they're not sharing information, it's just a massive firewall between each of those teams, heavily siloed. They look at each other. It's almost like open warfare in some companies. They're throwing things at each other. So it's about sharing and, and understanding each other's teams. So this is what we see is like you've got your business needs here. You've got your ops teams and your dev team. You need to all work together to address what your company needs. So Doing our DevOps reports and doing lots of consulting around the world for Puppet, we've come up with a lot of, well, seen a lot of myths that people have about DevOps. So I'm just going to go through some of them here. I'm not telling anyone they're doing anything wrong. I'm just going to say this is what we've observed and some of the things we do to overcome this. So once again, the one there is ops is only sysadmins. Who here has heard that before? The ops side of DevOps only is the sysadmins. Anyone heard that? So the ops side not only includes your system administrators, but it's all the other IT professionals in that area, such as your quality assurance and engineering, your business people, security, and your database admins, network admins. They all work together on your ops side. They're trying to keep the systems up and running. They're trying to make sure that security's in place. It's not just your sysadmin. The next one we have, which I just mentioned before, was the devs cannot be trusted. So how many times has someone heard a sysadmin say, I don't trust the devs? 
they're going to break something. <laughs> yeah, all the time. So why is that? That's coming from a lack of understanding and a lack of collaboration between your teams. You need to start working together. You need to educate each other. So me as a sysadmin, I shouldn't be expected to be able to write something in C and understand it fully. A dev might be able to do that, but like me as a sysadmin, I shouldn't expect a dev to understand all the stuff about an IT system underneath. Like, why, is, why am I changing a kernel parameter? Why am I putting this security in? But we should be educating each other. At Puppet, we have lunch and learns uh, once a week or once a fortnight where you bring your lunch into the main area where we sit and someone gives a talk about a part of Puppet that they're doing that most other people with the company wouldn't know about unless you're using Puppet itself. So you're trying to do educational processes around how to educate your whole company, not just one team. Don't keep the information inside. Share it out with your whole teams. And the blameless culture one. Who thinks that their culture is blameless in their company? I can't even say that. <laughs> but if you have a problem, you shouldn't be just pointing at someone, Carl, over there. It's his fault. We should take him out, throw him off the top of the building. No, we shouldn't do that. We should have had tools in place that picked up that he had made a mistake, done a security problem, should have had a process there that automatically looked it up and said, there's something that Carl's done in code or something he's done on the system that should not be allowed to be done. Sure, if he's stolen a computer, that is, he gets the blame for that, but the rest of it, he should be fined for. And that's where the automated testing comes in as well. Who's doing automated testing on all their releases and all their changes? Who's putting all their changes and all their releases into version control? Who's not? <laughs> no one's gutsy enough. <laughs> okay. And you need to iterate on that as well. Don't just do one educational process and go, now we've got DevOps, let's move on. You need to keep revisiting this all the time. Keep educating people. Something new is going to come out, like Docker when that came out. Who's using Docker now? few people. How'd you learn about Docker? Just read something on the internet? Did your company hold a lunch and learn session or something like that? Did you get sent on some sort of training? These are the things that we do at Puppet. We sit down, we go, okay, there's this new technology coming out. How, do, how does that going to impact us? Can we actually use it? How are our customers going to use it? So we start talking about it, getting all the teams together. And DevOps is just a buzzword. Who's heard that myth before? <laughs> I almost believe that in some cases. It's some companies you go to, they say they've got DevOps. What they've actually done is renamed one team to DevOps, made them all DevOps engineers, and they've suddenly got DevOps. <laughs> well done. <laughs> or another method is they've started up a whole new team, they've still got the sysadmins, they've still got the developers, but there's another team called DevOps, and they're not sure what they're even supposed to do because these other two teams are crossing over with them. So <laughs> it's not just a buzzword, but you've got to think about what you're doing. So we have in our DevOps report the proof of the metrics, like companies now can release software 200 times faster than they used to be able to do that. That means you'll be able to fix that code up as well, but hopefully, with all your automated testing, your mean time between failures, mean time to repair is also reduced by that sort of method. And when you do start doing DevOps, that does not mean you have to start using an absolute shitload of buzzwords. It just makes people angry. Who gets angry by buzzwords? A few people. <laughs> okay. And this is a very common one. This will never work in my company. Who's heard that before? Yeah. And this is um, to do with a lot of the culture, of, not of just the company, but the country you come from. Like I work in Japan a fair bit, and last year people were saying DevOps would never work in Japan because it's too hierarchical. We go to Japan this year, everyone wants to do DevOps. It only took a year and a bit to change their ideas behind it because they see other companies moving so quickly now. So what we suggest is you start small. Pick a project that your developers, your operations teams have in common. They need to both work on. 
choose a methodology you're going to use. Are you going to use some sort of agile method to do these? And pick a tool set. You don't have to have a massive tool set to start with. Start small. Who here has not got version control? Well, that's good. I still go to companies that have got no version control whatsoever. And they are programming live straight onto servers. Who thinks that's a great idea? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah, we've had customers, like our own customers, saying, do we have to put a Git server in? Can we just program straight on the Puppet Master? And he's like, I'm just going to leave now. I'll come back when you change your mind. So choose a tool set. You need something like a ticketing system, version control, monitoring, those sorts of things. You need those at least to see what's happening. And start holding inter-team events. Like this is the thing about, OK, this week a team's going to start talking about this. Another week another team's going to talk about something else. Start learning from each other. We've had where someone from the admin team goes and sits with the devs and goes and tries to figure out what they're doing. Try to educate them. Work together. It's really good. And ask for su subjective feedback. Who asked for feedback here from other teams on how they think they're doing? A few people. Who's terrified to do that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and once again, you need to collect the metrics and review. So once you've got this in place, you've checked, you've selected a project you're going to work on, you've got some tools, you're starting to work together. Is it actually starting to work? Are we releasing software faster? Are we having less failures? Are we getting to market quicker? And then just iterate on that. You'll find that once one team starts doing, or a set of teams start doing DevOps together, working together, more and more teams will want to get involved because they're seeing that you're actually delivering for the business in a faster way with less failures. So one of the places that most companies start at is this. These days, everyone is interested in security. So these people over here definitely are inter interested in security, but devs as well now. They want to be able to make sure that their code is secure. So pick a subject, a project, and let's work on the security side of it. Let's work together and try to address that through some sort of DevOps project we're going to do. And then you can show to the company that we've got all this testing in place. We know that when we release and, or build new machines, that the standard operating environment is actually built every time. It's not being overridden. The devs can put their code on top of it. We know it's not going to change anything on the underlying operating system, and it works. And we can repeat that constantly. We can build new stacks. We can release new software quickly. We've gone through a testing process that proves that we're not doing some crazy stuff in our code. So you can just start on those small things and build up and build up from there. And this is another really interesting one we have. Um, when I go see some customers, they say to me, so if I buy Puppet Enterprise, does that mean that I've got DevOps? And it's like, no. <laughs> DevOps is not only a cultural thing, tools, automation, and sharing. It's a series of tools. It's not just one thing. Like Some tools can cover a fair bit, but there's no one tool that covers everything. Anyone disagree with that? Oh, that's good. OK, so normally you have some sort of planning tool, a ticketing system, version control, a build system, artifact, store, configuration management, code deployment, and automated monitoring. Who has something similar to that in their DevOps tool chain? A few people? Yeah, that's good. And some tools can cover a fair few things of these, like some of the configuration management can do configuration management and code deployment. Some of the systems have version control and build systems together as well. So some of the examples like issue tracking here, like Jira, RT, you've got GitHub, um, Bitbucket Server, Bamboo Jenkins, Artifactory, Puppet, Chef. That can be, um, you can use Puppet and Chef for those as well. And you've got Nagios down here. So this is an example of what we see happening at several companies that have got quite a mature DevOps practice happening. And this is not what I expect people to do on day one when they've decided they're going to start doing DevOps. But a customer raises a ticket on your system. Now the customer might be internal. And this might be in a case of they want a change in a Docker container. 
So they want you to build a new Docker container. It might be you're writing Java code, it might be you're writing Puppet code. It doesn't matter what it is, they all raise a ticket about it. It goes into your ticketing system and it gets triaged and assigned to a team. Now this is depending what your methodology is. You might be putting that into a sprint to get actually looked at. You might be doing some other method. So the team there draws off the code from version control. Now some of the more mature version control and ticketing systems work together, can actually interact with each other and start up new branches and stuff like that. Your team here works on the code, puts it back in version control. One thing a lot of companies forget to do is updating this ticket here. Who's seen a ticket in their ticketing system that's gone from open to closed and suddenly it's resolved with nothing in the ticket? I certainly have. So it's not a good thing to see where, how did they solve it? I have no idea. It's just gone into the product and you've released the product and it wasn't actually what you wanted to see. They've done it somewhat different than what you thought they would do. So make sure these people here are always updating this ticket system so the customer, whoever they are, has visibility of what's going on in the system. Remember, DevOps is about sharing, information sharing. You need people to understand what is happening. So they work on the code through your, the team does, put it in version control, the customer's all happy, they can see it's getting progressed. They come to a point where they're going, okay, I'm pretty happy with that code, we need to test it. Now this, they submit the code in here, it should go over to your build system automatically. Who here is using a build system like Bamboo or Jenkins? Anyone doing that? Yeah. So these build systems here, it's not just about building, it's about testing as well. So who gets their build system to go through and do stuff like aspect testing or something like that? A few people, yeah. Whatever testing it is. You should be doing like unit testing, your integration testing, whatever that may be. At this point here, once you've put code over here to build, what I do in a lot of cases, say if it's puppet code, I go through and check against the standard operating environment to see if someone's trying to override something and do something evil. So I do a security check. Then we go and compile it to see if it works correctly. And then this system here can talk out to your hypervisor, whether it be AWS, whether it be OpenStack, VMware, I don't care what it is, and starts up a new machine or machines and puts that software onto the machines and then does a test on those machines. So this is where your configuration management comes in as well, because if you're building machines out here, you want your machines to be exactly like your production environment. Who here is not making, or who here, is the test servers out here are not exactly like production? The worst case I've seen in Australia at a bank was, production down here was Solaris, test up here was Red Hat. <laughs> so what was the point of testing the code at all? So. So this is where your configuration management comes in as well. You want to make sure that if this thing's calling out to AWS or OpenStack or whatever you're using, that it, the servers it is creating are exactly like what you've got in production. It puts that new code on there and runs through and does a test on the physical machine to make sure it actually does work. And when I say physical, it's a VM. This might, you might be building a Docker container, so you need to put that on something and check that that Docker container does work. It does run, it does everything you want. So once that done, that's done, you should get a green light coming back through the system, all the way back saying, yeah, it's all happy, ready to rock and roll. So who were the devs here? A few people, okay. Who's a Windows dev? Come on, you can put your hands up. <laughs> I'm not gonna make fun of you. <laughs> okay, so a lot of the times where I see Windows devs doing this, at the end here, it does a zip file and they just hand it over to the sysadmin or something like that and go, can you put it on the server? Who think that's a great idea? No, not so much. <laughs> These build systems here, like Jenkins and Bamboo, can actually reach into your, your machines and put the code on there. But what happens after that code has been put on there? Does Jenkins or Bamboo come back through every so often and check if it's the right version? You could have someone evil, once again, like Carl over there from Puppet, who got into that system and just changed it back or changed it altogether. So part of your security is maybe you want to deploy that via a different method and make sure the ongoing package, whatever you've created, is always correct. So what we see a lot now is people here in the build system, they 
say if you're doing Java code, war code, they'll war files, they'll package that up into an RPM or an MSI or something like that and dump that on some sort of artifact store, whether that be an RPM store or chocolatey or whatever it is. Then it's version controlled as well, so you've got the version in there, so you can go, I want that version. You don't have to worry about a build server reaching out to all your different nodes to put it on. It's just there, ready to rock and roll. Who's doing that? Is anyone doing that? Yep, that's good to see. Okay, so once the team knows that this has passed all the tests, let's put something on the artifact store, you can uh, trigger configuration management to go put tell these nodes, say in dev or test, to go and get the stuff from the artifact store and then put it onto the individual nodes. You can then test that in your dev environment. You want to do UAT testing or testing in your test environment. And then you can prom promote that code to production as well when you want to. Now, at the same time, all the systems should have been hooked up to the monitoring system as well to make sure that you know what's going on in your whole system there. So who's got a, a pretty mature DevOps practice that does that? A few people? Yeah. Who is trying to get towards there? Yeah. A lot of the companies I see where we first see this is they have the ticketing system and the version control system, and they have monitoring. This last bit here is where they stumble a lot of the time from a tool's point of view. It's a lot of work to start doing automated testing. Who thinks that they've got a, a pretty mature automated testing system? Yeah. Unfortunately, with automated testing, you're always going to find something that you never tested. <laughs> so once again, you need to iterate. When you build tests over here, you need to revisit them. Don't just build a test and think, yep, yeah, we're good from now on. Just like when you make something idiot-proof, they build better idiots. So. <laughs> You've got to <laughs> revisit this because there's always going to be new problems coming out in IT. So the reason why we see customers do this sort of thing here is it gives them the speed, reliability, productivity, insight, and security in there. By having this system here, you're building your test systems exactly like your production systems. Your standard operating environment is being tested through this as well against what code you're putting in there. You're making sure that someone's not overriding root or something like that, changing an administrator password, grabbing a file where they shouldn't be, changing permissions. You've gone through that. So that keeps your sysadmins very, very happy. Sysadmins are all about keeping the system stable. But because you can build systems out here very quickly and go through and test, that means your devs are really happy as well because they know that their code's going to work on the machine as it should be built in production. It keeps your QA and your QE teams very happy because they can build all these tests in here. And who here is using test-driven development? Anyone? Who thinks it actually works? <laughs> yeah. Who here has gone back and read, written the test after they've done all the code? Yeah, <laughs> I have. So you can write all your tests in there so it keeps everyone happy. Your sysadmin knows this the standard operating environment is going to be met. The devs know that their code's going to work. The QA team knows that quality is in the, team, in, in the product. And your security team knows that whatever they put down in the security guidelines is actually being adhered to in code. So you can build whole test suites through this and get all your code up and running, even if it's a multi-machine environment. And it doesn't matter here if that's going to be setting up Docker with Compose and everything. It doesn't matter if it's Puppet code. It doesn't matter if it's Java. This works for everything, pretty much. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to talk about today. Is there any questions from anyone about what I've discussed here? Any disagreements? No? Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>